Good morning. Good morning this Monday morning, September 14th. I'm Dana Corsello, the Vicar of Washington National Cathedral, and I'm so pleased to be with you this morning. We will begin with these opening words. As you have loved us, may we love one another. As you have loved us, may we love one another. Today is the feast day of Holy Cross Day. The color is red, which is why I'm wearing this red stole. So I'm going to pray with you two colics in honor of this feast day. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself, mercifully grant that we, who glory in the mystery of our redemption, may have grace to take up our cross and follow him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. O tree of Calvary, send your roots deep into my soul. Gather together my frailties, my soiled heart, my sandy instability, and my muddy desires, and entwine them with strong roots of your arboreal love. Amen. Our praise this morning, this is actually anonymous, but I think it's beautiful and I want to share it with you. And it begins, Lord God, we praise you for those riches of our creation that we will never see, for stars whose light will never reach the earth, for species of living things that were born, that flourished and perished before humankind appeared on the, in the world, for patterns and colors in the flowers which only insect eyes are able to see, for strange high music that humans can never hear. Lord God, you see everything you have made and behold, that it is very good. Now, the scripture appointed for Holy Cross Day, our gospel is from John, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 31st verse. Jesus said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I when I am lifted high from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowds answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you, for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of the light. Now that's from the 12th chapter of John's Gospel. We celebrate the story of the exaltation of the Holy Cross on this day, this September 14th. The Roman Catholics do it, the Orthodox do it, and of course, the Anglicans hold this as a feast day as well. So just briefly, I wanna give you a history of how this came about. Early in the fourth century, St. Helena, mother of the Roman Emperor Constantine, went to Jerusalem in search of the holy places of Christ's life. She raised the second century temple of Aphrodite, which tradition held was built over the Savior's tomb, Jesus's tomb. And her son built the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre on that spot. During the excavation, workers found three crosses. Legend has it that the one on which Jesus died was identified when it's touch healed a dying woman. That cross immediately became an object of veneration. 
At a Good Friday celebration in Jerusalem toward the end of the fourth century, according to an eyewitness, the wood was taken out of its silver container and placed on a table together with the inscription Pilate ordered placed above Jesus' head. Then all the people passed through one by one, all of them bowed down, touching the cross and the inscription first with their foreheads, then with their eyes, and after kissing the cross, they move on. To this day, the English churches, excuse me, the Eastern churches, Catholic and Orthodox alike, we all celebrate the exaltation of the Holy Cross on this September day. The feast entered the Western calendar in the seventh century after Emperor Heraclius recovered the cross from the Persians who had carried it off in 1614, 15 years earlier. According to the story, the emperor intended to carry the cross back into Jerusalem himself, but was unable to move forward until he took off his imperial garb and became a barefoot pilgrim. So that's the story of the exaltation of Holy Cross, the exaltation, pardon me, um, and there is some legend and fable to that. So I'm, I want to leave you with that, but also just a few words that I've been thinking of. And I think why, why we worship the cross. And it's so much more than just a symbol. It's so much more than just a piece of jewelry. And why the crucifixion is so central, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus on the cross um, that is so central to our belief as Christians. Um, I once heard Richard Rohr say that Christian people, that we should be an entirely different species because of what God accomplished through Jesus on the cross. And what he meant by that was that if we truly believe in what Jesus did for us, that what God enabled to Jesus do for us, um, it could transform our whole lives. And, and he's saying this because we're often not transformed by the cross like we should be. So on the cross, Jesus accepted the victimhood that the world offered God. But Jesus, in doing that, Jesus does not create victims in return. He accepted the victimhood of all of us, all that the world had offered to God, but he does not create victims back. So Jesus never returned it in kind, the fear, the pain, the agony, because as you know, on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So this was the highest level of love expressed by this act of Jesus dying for us on the cross. And so the victory of the cross means that you and I can be transformed by it. And what, what I mean by that, and I don't mean to have all this churchy theological language, what it means is that we have been given space, we have been given the freedom not to retaliate, not to retaliate when people hurt us, when people slander us, when people um, do evil things to us, we can enjoy the victory of the cross by letting it go, by, by saying, I don't have to act in kind. I don't have to return this horrible thing you've done to me. Um, that's the mystery. That's the mystery that Jesus did that for us on, and that one, that one transformative moment and we don't have to keep repeating the evil that enslaves us. We don't have to hate back. We don't have to do ill back. We don't have to speak ill back. We can just say, stop, enough's enough. I'm a Christian. I can be transformed by the love and the gift that was given us on this Holy Cross day, this Holy Cross moment. So I want to, um, especially in light, and I think of why this is on my heart, in light of 
you know, we're in the throes of this election season and things are going to get probably uglier and harder. And um, we're, we're all going to be so just, I don't know, so tender, so tender. So I think this is a way of saying we don't have to hate back. We don't have to have schadenfreude, Freud, you know, and, and um, experience a glee when something else comes out, something that's painful to the other side. We can let it go. We can just let it roll off our backs. We have the freedom not to hate back the people who perhaps hate us or don't agree with us. That's, that's the meaning of the cross in, in light of it being a transformative vehicle, a transformative symbol. I mean, it, it truly is just a gift to think that Jesus took all of this on for us so that we don't have to carry it around. You know, sin, sin, sin is a really difficult thing. Um, I found a quote, here it is. We are not punished for our sins, but by them. Albert Hubbard said this, we are not punished for our sins, but by them. And so this is sort of what I mean. I think we don't have to carry that sin and resentment and awfulness around with us. We can just let it go because the cross took all of that on for us. I hope I'm making sense this morning. Um, this is a difficult one, but an important one. And um, I do think, you know, if we could live by this, and it's so hard, and I fail, as you know, I'm a work in progress. I fail, I fail, I fail. But if we can allow ourselves to be transformed by the meaning and the theology of what Jesus did for us, we don't have to carry all of that resentment and anger and hate with us because we're often punished by our own sins. Um, we punish ourselves. So let, let's let this go and um, celebrate the gift that God gave us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So here's a prayer and a reminder. I want to leave with you. Blessed are you, one of another, and most blessed is the other with whom you are one. Blessed is the rock, and holy is the river, and beautiful are the shapes and spaces they cannot make without the other. Blessed is the breath, and holy is the heart, and precious are the life and community that depend intimately upon them. Blessed is the suffering and holy is the rebellion and fearsome are the lessons of recreation they demonstrate to the cruel and greedy. Now, our prayers, our prayers, our prayers. As the day lengthens, O Christ, Teach us to walk in your love. As we strive to be faithful in word and deed, teach us to love one another. While we live as part of your creation, teach us to love this good earth. While we offer our prayers this hour, teach us to love ourselves. Teach us to love ourselves and one another and that we can always be transformed by the cross of Christ. And it is with grateful hearts, teach us to trust in your love. Gracious Lord, the air sings with songs of glory, water flashes silver with creation, and the forests bloom with leaves for healing nations. May your light and love fill our hearts and souls and minds that we may share your love with the world. Amen. As you have loved us, may we love one another. And I ask that God truly bless you, that God bless you in the sign of the cross, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May God's love reign with you. 
this day and always. Amen.